guys, this is a bit of a struggling story. Especially with the videos I've been doing on mental health, I want to be completely real with you guys. So when I was 14, one of the first mental health problems I had was agoraphobia. If you don't know, agoraphobia is fear of leaving your home. And I dealt with that at 14 for five months, I think it was. And obviously the video I did recently told you about my struggles with even talking to somebody in the mental health system right now, even though I'm under the, like a health team, but I can't get in touch with anybody. And I think I'm going down the agoraphobia route again. So I haven't been out. It's, it's Tuesday night. I haven't been out of the house properly since Saturday when I went round to do a little bit of food shopping. Sunday I did go and put the bins out, which takes like two minutes. But I didn't go out the house at all yesterday. And I've just tried to go out for a walk and I couldn't. So I put my shoes on, got downstairs. I live in a block of flats. So I got downstairs to my front door and I couldn't open it. I just, I don't know what it was. Like I could hear people outside. I could hear music. Something was freaking me out. And I physically couldn't open the door. Came back upstairs, locked myself in my flat and tried to calm my breathing because I started what I think was going to be a panic attack if I hadn't have controlled my breathing like I did. Again, that's something I've had a, I had a lot of when I was a teenager, so I know how to calm myself down enough for me not to have an actual attack. But right now I'm really scared and I don't know if I'm scared because of thinking that something bad's gonna happen or if I'm scared because it's a mental health problem and I know it's a slippery slope. I'm supposed to be going to the baking class tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to. I'm more inclined not just to stay at home because I don't want to go outside, but I need to get in touch with someone tomorrow. And I'm getting a bit emotional because I know when I'm, I'm getting really bad and at the moment I'm getting really bad. If I don't want to go outside, that is really bad. And I have to force myself to go outside a lot anyway because, one, because I know I have the possibility to go down this route again. But I don't like going outside because I don't like being around people or crowds of people and there's lots of sensory issues. So I have to force myself to go out like I was going to this evening. Like All I was going to do was walk around the block for like 10, 15 minutes and I couldn't do it. And that's an alarm bell for me. There's a lot going on in my life right now. And I just really need to be able to talk to somebody in the mental health team. So I might not go to the baking class tomorrow. I think I'm going to just try everything to phone somebody in the mental health team. Phone the actual... I'm not even... Probably not even going to try and phone their, their mobiles. I'm just going to phone the actual place and ask to speak to someone because I can't carry on like this. I've been feeling a bit sick leading up to when I was knew I was gonna try and go out. And I've just been feeling a bit like, I've just been really tired today for absolutely no reason. I had a decent night's sleep, but I've just been tired and a bit low and I just need to speak to somebody. And this is what I meant in my video. I haven't been able to speak to someone in six months and it's now got to the stage where I am going into crisis and I need to speak to someone. But if they just stayed in touch with me and spoken once a week, phone somebody and let them know that you're there for them, just let them talk whatever problems they have, it's gonna help, it's gonna help stop them from getting into crisis, which after six months is now, I think, the start of what's happening to me, unfortunately. So I wanted to document this because I want to show the real side of mental health and that it is, it's not great. Like, it's horrible. It's horrible. Let's be blunt, it's horrible. I hate having mental health 
diagnosis. I hate that I have to live with it every day. I hate that I can't just go out and work and have a normal social life like everybody else, but this is my reality and I just wanted to show that and it kind of helps me to talk about it even though I don't personally know you guys, it helps me to talk about it and share my struggles and like the good bits as well, but just just to show you what it's really like to have mental health diagnosis. So I think that's what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to try and phone the mental health team and hopefully speak to someone and just tell them what's going on and tell them how I'm struggling and that what they're doing just isn't good enough. So I'll let you know what happens tomorrow. I'm just going to try and relax and watch some TV this evening and try not to think about it too much. But yeah, I'll let you know what happens. So this morning I managed to get in touch with my support worker's manager and she said my support worker is off sick again for at least another month. But I explained everything that had been going on about not being able to leave the flat yesterday and um, how it sort of freaked me out a bit because um, I have a history of agoraphobia. She asked me what I'd been doing um, and I told her about starting volunteering in the library and doing a baking class. So which she said, you know, that's good. She said, but you're obviously the kind of person who you're just sort of determined to push yourself through everything, even if you're struggling and it's not always a good thing, which is true. So um, I also explained like the family issues, the thyroid stuff. She said, maybe I should speak to a psychiatrist about the medication causing the thyroid issues. I had um, like bloods taken recently for just to review the situation. So I'm just gonna wait for the results of that first. So she said she's gonna phone me back in a couple of hours when she's back in the office. And then she has a diary in front of her because she wants to come see me next week, which is good. Kind of ridiculous. It's taken like months and months for me to get to this point where I'm actually like, hey, seriously need help now but at least the help is like gonna be there so she's gonna come see me sometime next week the only thing worrying me now is leaving the flat because i actually need milk so i'm gonna have to force myself to like go to the shop and i also have to pick my glasses up on saturdays so anyway that's kind of positive which you know that's good i'm gonna get to speak some by the way my eyes are watering because i've just been coughing not because i'm crying <laughs> So yeah, it's good that I'm going to get to see her, I'm going to get to talk about everything that's bothering me and hopefully get the help that I need. So yeah, she's going to phone me back this afternoon with a day she's going to come next week. But I wanted to make this video to like be real with you guys and show you like the struggles that someone with mental health diagnosis has to go through. Yeah, just to kind of share it and just show the bad bits as well as the good bit. So yeah, I'll speak to her later and then she'll be able to see her next week, which was good. But unfortunately it's got to the point where I'm in crisis before I get to speak to someone, which is what I was saying, that it's not how it should be. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you're all doing well and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.